that's actually the, the worst part about composing for me is the beginning of a piece. And I can't get settled, the apartment, if it's messy, I have to clean it. You know, there's, I feel like I have to get my mind in order. And if there's anything distracting me, I'll use that as an excuse to run away from the paper. But I think what I have learned over the years is I'm really good about, if I can just get myself to sit down long enough to brainstorm on a, just a blank sheet of paper, not even manuscript paper, just ideas, written ideas about what I want for the piece. Another thing that I do to really help with that is I have what I call a minute a day challenge, where every day when I'm starting a piece, I have to write a minute of music. It doesn't have to be good, it doesn't have to be bad, it just has to be a minute of music. And that way, I feel like at the end of seven days, I'll have seven minutes of music that I can choose from and start to say, okay, that's a good idea over here. <laughs> that's terrible, let me just throw that part away. But it gives me some choices. I feel like going for the doctorate really teaches you how to organize your head. I think that that's the, the biggest thing anybody can learn um, going through school, and maybe not the doctorate program. For me, it happened to be then. But um, all the time I'm telling my students, you have to figure out how your mind works and then uh, figure out where your strengths are. If you know that you're weak and like if you're a procrastinator, you're going to have to work around that. So I feel like for me, the challenge of all the years of school was figuring out all that, those issues. So when I graduated, I could really hit the ground running as a professional. And it wasn't quite as smooth as that or anything. And I think a lot of, um, in addition to being organized all the, as much as I can be, I took on some campaigns earlier in my career. So I wrote a choir piece. I would cold call 30 uh, choirs. I would send out um, a recording and parts of the score to 30 choirs. And I did campaign after campaign like that, but it paid off. It, you know, it only takes one person opening it and programming that piece to then lead to four more commissions and commissions by other groups, which is what's happened with in that one particular case. So I think just not only having the discipline to write and to get back to people with emailing and being on top of uh, your career with your website, but you also have to be disciplined about chasing out opportunities. You can't just sit back and, and think that maybe a publisher will do it for you or maybe a recording will get out there and miraculously everyone will want to do it. I just don't know if one competition can really, or one recording or one piece can change your path all that much. I mean, granted, if you were to win something like the Pulitzer or <laughs> the Grandmire, perhaps, or even the MacArthur, but I think in general, these careers are slow building careers. They, they're one step at a time and you have to be organized to make that happen. doing pottery helped me uh, think about process in a whole other way. It's the same thing that I got out of going to artist colonies where you sit down with a filmmaker or a writer and you talk about their process and then you start to see wow that's you know they're using a different language but they're also talking about 
um, how do you get from point A to point B, and how do you do it in a way that's convincing? So um, pottery also has taught me a lot about um, patience. If you are at all uh, trying to force a, a piece to happen, you're going to nudge the clay, and then it's going to be forever ruined. So <laughs> uh, I think that kind of patience actually has helped me back in the composing world to just take a deep breath, do my thing where I write a minute of music a day at the beginning, and know at the end of that week I am going to have options. I think all those things are processes that let me know that um, I don't have to go with my first impulse. I can really take my time and find the ideas that I feel very strongly about. I think there's been moments where I've been genuinely concerned how an audience might react. Um, most of the time I'm not. I think that my language tends to be more accessible than not, so I'm, I guess I'm kind of lucky that way or I've made the choice to be that way. But there's a moment in my string quartet number two, Demons and Angels, where it's the end of the middle, I'm sorry, the third movement called Inner Demons, where you've heard four themes presented in a scherzo trio form and then they all begin to mix together and it's chaos for about a minute straight and they're just playing all on top of each other and I was just panicking before that first performance and wondering if people going to just tune out or are they going to get disgusted and you know will anybody do the, the ultimate stand up and storm out thing <laughs> and as it was when it premiered uh, I did see a lot of heads turn and people look at each other at that moment but it passed they all got through it and they want to you know the rest of the quartet finish and it turned out to be I think it is the strongest movement of that piece so I feel like it was a really good risk to take. Sometimes you just have to not worry about what the audience is going to, how they're going to react. Mm -hmm. 